let's try to determine the limit of x plus 1 over absolute x plus 6 as x tends towards negative 6. Now what happens if we try to do a direct substitution? Let's assume that x was equal to negative 6 and substitute that into our function. This would give us negative 6 plus 1 in the numerator, which is negative 5, and it would give us the absolute value of negative 6 plus 6 in the denominator, which is actually 0. So since we have the form, a number divided by 0, this indicates to us that we are dealing with a vertical asymptote in this case. So our one-sided limits and maybe our overall limit are going to be unbounded and maybe tending towards positive or minus infinity. So let's break this problem down into two substeps. Let's take a look at both directions. The direction from the left-hand side or values that are a little bit smaller than negative 6. And let's take a look at the problem from the right-hand direction or for values that are a little bit larger than negative 6. Let's take a look logically at what's happening with the denominator, since that's kind of where the issue is in this particular question. If I start to choose values that are a little bit smaller than negative 6, for example, negative 6.1, and I do this evaluation, I'm going to get a value that's pretty close to 0. So in this case, 0 0.1. If I were to make these evaluations a little bit smaller, for example, taking negative 6.01 instead, then I'd get a number that's even closer to 0, like 0 0.01 after I do the evaluation. So this means that the denominator is always going to be a positive number that's really, really close to zero. But what about the numerator? Well, the numerator is going to be about negative six plus one. So the numerator is always going to be hovering around negative five. So if our numerator is always negative, but our denominator is always positive, that means that the infinity that we're going to obtain is a negative infinity. The y values we're going to get here are going to be unbounded. They're going to be unbounded in the negative direction. And you could double check this with a table of values if you wanted to. Similarly, as we move into part two of this problem, the logic for the denominator doesn't change. As I start to choose values that are close to negative six, but a little bit bigger than negative six, these absolute value bars are going to ensure that the denominator ends up being a positive value. And it's gonna be a positive value very close to the number zero. But what's happening in our numerator? In this case, we could start substituting in values like negative 5.9 or negative 5.99, and we see that the numerator is always going to be negative once again. So if our numerator is always going to be negative, and our denominator is always going to be a positive small value, then what we're going to get are unbounded y values tending towards minus infinity once again. Since both of our one-sided limits are unbounded and tending towards negative infinity, we can now say that the overall limit does not exist, but we're gonna write this in a nice mathematical way. We're gonna say that there's a vertical asymptote here, and our y values are tending towards minus infinity as we get close to that vertical asymptote of negative six.